What's up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube video. My name is Des. I go by Des B. If you're new here, hello. And if you're not new here, oh my god, mosquito bites. And if you're not new here, welcome back. Today we are in episode eight of my shredding for the wedding series where I've been taking you guys through my mini cut, preparing for my wedding, more so my bachelorette party, but who really cares about the details. I'm actually gonna be discussing and talking to you guys about my own journey, how I've transformed my body, how I've changed my lifestyle, how I've gotten friends on board, how I got my fiance on board, and everything else in between. This is a highly requested topic, especially for you guys that are very invested in my content on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. You guys are always wondering, you know, how I've transformed from this to this. And so I'm really excited to take you guys through it. I wanna add some photos throughout the video and so you can really see what I've gone through and how my body has changed. Before getting into that, I want to point out this really cute crop hoodie that I'm wearing. This is my new DBFT merch, which is releasing Sunday, the 14th of July. So to be honest, not sure when this video is gonna go live, but there's the tea on that. Along with that is my phone cases, which I don't have on hand right now because I put my phone up. <laughs> But I do have the Big Quads Bigger Heart merch. These come in muscle tanks, they come in t-shirts, they are unisex as well. The new and limited edition DBFT fanny pack. Oh, they're so cute! And this is the exact design that also comes on the phone case as well as the Big Quads Bigger Heart on the phone case as well. So they do come in Samsung and Apple. We have a ton of other like small merch as well, but you can check that out in the description box below. I don't wanna waste too much time here, but I'm just very excited. Anyway, let's get into the video. Just wanted to throw that in real quick. So make sure that you stick around, subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. And if you're gonna waste energy giving it a thumbs down, you might as well just click out right now and save yourself some time. All right, so where honestly do I even begin? I feel like I don't need to give you guys a full rundown of like my whole life, but I will start at kind of the beginning stages of my fitness journey or where I really got into maybe health. You wanna call it like the medical field? I'm not sure. Back in high school, start out, okay, I was I was a freaking stud athlete. I'm not, wow. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna try to gas myself up too hard, but I was, I was the sh okay? I played, travel basketball, I was very, very good at basketball. I literally wanted to be LeBron James. So fast forward, I got into high school, I'm playing basketball, and all of a sudden it's the end of practice, my sophomore year, and boom, my knee goes out. I tear my ACL, I strain my PCL, I strain my MCL, I tore my meniscus. Literally a football injury that occurred in basketball. I was going for a jump stop to get the defender off me on a breakaway layup and literally my like right knee just kept going and I was just like, Oh my gosh. Fell to the ground and it, the rest is history. During that time, I did pick up the sport of volleyball, but obviously hurting my knee, I was out of the count. As I continued during recovery, I decided that, hey, I should probably give up basketball because I really liked volleyball and I was also at volleyball. So I was just like, you know what? I feel like volleyball is a little bit less on my joints. I like it a little bit more and I want to continue. Come senior year of high school, I decided to try basketball again. I was really into it, wanting to continue. And then all of a sudden I committed to college for volleyball. So I ended up giving up basketball because I was like, you know, it's just not worth it. During this time, I was in a thing in high school that I took college credits called Professional Health Career Academy. This is where it really lit my fire of fitness, health, everything. From there, I then got into EMT school. So I went to school, like went to little college course to become an emergency medical technician. I ended up never taking my EMT written test because I got too busy with college volleyball. So sadly that ship sailed, but it was still a really great opportunity. And if I ever wanted to go back and be an EMT, I could do that. But not right now. As I got into college, this is where things really kicked off because I was in volleyball in college, which equaled a lot greater, you know, level of training, fitness, having to be in physical shape. So we had to work out, we had to do all these different things that I was just like kind of new to besides your little like dilly dallying around in high school. Once I got into season, we didn't do that much weightlifting, but I found myself really enjoying it. I had to take some PE classes for college, you know, 
What to do? So I really started to understand the gym. During this time, I was also going to school with hopes of becoming a physical therapist. That was kind of my goal. Once I injured my knee, I was like, you know what? I want to be a physical therapist. I want to help people do the same thing, how I recovered and how my PT helped me. Once I got into my second year of college, I transferred to Western Michigan University and continued volleyball there. So I played division one, we ended up winning the MAC tournament. I have a ring and everything. We went to the NCAA tournament, got rocked by University of Wisconsin, but whatever, it was still a great opportunity. And that is when, again, my level of training started going into more of personal training instead of PT. I was really inspired by my trainer in volleyball. His name was Tim. His name was Tim. So shout out Tim, if you ever see this video, you inspired me. And I would always ask him questions and I'm sure I annoyed him at one point, but I always wanted to know how he got to do what he was doing. So I wanted to train athletes. I wanted to do the same thing. All of a sudden, boom, like a year and a half goes by and I get kicked off the volleyball team out of nowhere. I've talked about this in previous videos, talked about it on my Instagram. Doesn't need to be talked about again. It's just a long story, but it was virtually heartbreaking. I was undefined. Um emotionally stable and uh, it was just a very hard time in my life I didn't know what the hell was going on or what I was supposed to be doing so during this time I was then switching my emphasis of my major in exercise science to go more so a personal training route instead of PT from there I started to get into the gym and really learn what it was during my major I was learning more about like workout programming and strength training and nutrition and cardiovascular health so I was taking what I was applying in the classroom and then applying it in the gym and learning simultaneously. When I first started in the weight room, this was three years ago. Four years ago, I got kicked off the volleyball team. Yeah, four years ago, I got kicked off the volleyball team. I went hard in CrossFit for about a year. Totally like blew out my whole body and my orthopedic surgeon was like, Yo, do you want a knee replacement at 30 or do you want to be on the ground with your kid? And I was like, I'll take kids for 500 please once that was discovered and kind of knocked out That's when I became began weight training like I said in that was three years ago So fast forward I got into it and immediately people were like, oh my gosh, do you compete? Do you compete? And I'm like what in the what are you talking about? Like, no, I'm not an athlete anymore. I don't know what you mean. That's when the world of bodybuilding kind of like opened up to me and they were like, oh You mean Arnold Schwarzenegger is not just the Terminator? Hasta la vista, baby. That confused me a little bit. That's when I learned about like the Arnold, the Arnold Classic, and everything in between about weightlifting, bodybuilding, and the changes that your body makes when you're competing. Lo and behold, I find a coach who had competed himself. This is my first gym that I was ever personal training at, and he kind of took me under his wing and helped me prep, kind of just like, out of nowhere, not very traditional. It was just like, oh my God, this before I was into Instagram before anything, I was just kind of like posting on Instagram as like a normal person. I wasn't like sharing fitness, like in hopes of gaining followers. Like I didn't really know that was a thing. So as I got into competing, that is when I found people like Amanda Bucci, Emily Duncan, Taylor Chamberlain, Marie Wold, all these like hot fitspos and they were doing competitions. So that's when I realized like, holy crap, people follow people? Like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. So as I continued in my first prep, this is 2016, I was like, okay, I definitely want to compete. So I, again, competed, got inspired, took a 17 month bulk, came back, last year, the year of 2018, competed and went pro. So I only competed in five shows and in my fifth show, I won and I went pro, which is kind of like low key unheard of just because it's a very short amount of time. A lot of people chase that pro card for like a lot of years, a lot of shows, but I was able to do it in just five, which is really special. And I, I take a lot of pride in that to be honest, cause I put a lot of effort into my physique. So during this time, I went from training literally seven days a week 
I missed seven days a week. How? I don't even know how I functioned in college plus doing seven days of workouts a week for like two hours. Dude, I'd be there for like two hours. And I thought that that was what was supposed to happen. But instead, I started pumping back the brakes in 2017 and 2018 and really taking like four day splits, five day splits, and then maybe on my sixth and seventh day, maybe going for a walk. But ultimately learning the incorporation of rest and how positive it can be on the body and really that is when I saw a change in my physique is when I started not only properly pre and post workout nutrition regimen, but also taking actual time off and recovering. So after 2018, so this is last year, about a year ago, almost to the date, I went pro and then I got my boobs done. So if you guys are new here, hi, I have fake boobs. I've posted about it. I just don't feel the need to make a disclaimer in every single caption and description box. But yes, my boobs are fake. Proud of it. Best money I've spent. But after I got my boobs done, it was really hard for me to get back in the gym because not only was I recovering, but I was going through the post-show blues. Like I felt so fat and looking back, I was like literally this big. All of these transformations are occurring in my body. And that's when I think my biggest growth has occurred is this past year. Not only have I grown in age to where like muscle development has just been through the roof, but also I've grown in ways of mentality and being able to put weight on my body and be comfortable with it. There's obviously days still where I wake up and I'm like, why do I have to look like that? I feel attacked. But you know, we, we literally all have them. And I think as a woman, in the industry, I think as a woman period, we can't escape body image. We can't escape certain level of body dysmorphia because that's just who we are as humans. I read a really cool like stat one time with something along the lines of, don't freaking quote me, like there's at least 10 to 12 different versions of you that people see. So like everyone you meet sees something different. I think that's so powerful because you think of the one version you see each day when you think of like the 12 that other people see that probably just see how freaking amazing you are and it's something to remember. So throughout my journey, there's obviously been ups and downs, lulls, periods of what I felt as it was a plateau, but I think that the most important thing I've learned through all of it is that it truly evolves with time. As much as we think like, okay, I'm gonna have this goal and I'm gonna get it done in a year. Even when you think, even when you think you've peaked, even when you think, oh my gosh, this is the best my body's gonna look. It's not, like you still have so much that you can continue to do and recomp and change your body. And it's truly something to remember that it's a fitness journey not a fitness vacation, right? So instead of saying, oh, I'm gonna go hard for six months, no sister, you're gonna go hard for your whole life. This is a lifestyle change. This is a way to learn how to feel your body, learn how to love it, and really go from there to then create this everlasting mark on your life, your health, your fitness journey, your mentality, emotions, everything. During this time, I did have a lot of ups and downs in my hormones as well. My first prep ever back in 2016, I did not lose my period. I was about 12% body fat, but I did not lose my period. Now, during this time, I was also on birth control and I was on the pill. Therefore, each month, you kind of always got a period because you had a withdrawal bleed, even if it was like fake, you know? I'm not really sure if I like lost my period or not. My second prep this past year in 2018, I did lose my period and it was gone for almost two years. Now this time I was on an IUD, so an interuterine device. Obviously it's not the pill, it's an, it's like goes up in your uterus and like it's like a little T and it just sits there. Well, that gave me so much freaking anxiety as well as terrible mood swings, depressive episodes, acne all down my lats. It was so embarrassing and so terrible that I immediately got got off of it after not even a year. And for as much pain as it caused putting it in, as fast as I got it out, it was just not worth it. But the way that I did get my hormones leveled out and back is by taking balance, getting my body fat back up to a great hormonal response level, as well as increasing my muscle mass again and getting back just into being me. Now I do have a whole video that I'm planning on doing on how to reverse diet, AKA getting back, you know, your body fat, getting back into a level of health and also on I really want to talk about some health as well as my experience with hormonal contraceptives. 
and all of that so virtually what i wanted to do was kind of share this little glimpse into how long my fitness journey has been so i've been on this journey for almost four years and in four years my body has transformed my mind has transformed but it's important to realize how much i've also grown in literal age i went from this little 20 21 year old to now 24 and a half years old and that is very important to note so if you're someone out there who is like you know, in your early 20s and you're just like, oh my God, I don't wanna look a certain way. Us women, we don't like peak. We don't get to our like max muscle opportunity of growth until we're like 26, 27, 28, even in our early 30s. I thought you weren't gonna come. I wanna be thirsty. Oh, I thought you were gonna come. A lot of things change once you turn 30, but you have a lot of really great things that are happening later in life. And as old as you think you are and how developed you might think you should be or how hard you work, it's really hard to do that and change your body when you're just not old enough and your body isn't matured enough. So I wish that younger me would have given myself a little bit more of a break because I looked into my body as like just not develop enough when I really look forward now and just be like, dang, I was just so young. And I still am, like I'm only 24, like, Okay, that is like kind of old. But that is something that you definitely have to remember. So if you're new here, if you're someone who wants to hear more, if you have any specific questions, feel free to comment below. I didn't wanna like drag out this video, but I think it's important to take a few things away from my journey and a few things that I've learned. And that's, you know, number one, focus on your nutrition, have fun, have balance, but also know that there's places where you have to say yes and have to say no. Number two, you don't have to be in the gym seven days a week and you don't need to be there for two plus hours every single day and you don't need to do two plus hours of cardio or x y and z amounts of cardio take care of your body take care of rest and make sure that ultimately for your goal you're doing what is necessary and then number three just know that over the length of time it is a journey not a vacation i think that's one of the best things i've probably like ever said that makes a lot of sense so just know that no matter where you're at right now there's literally so much to go like you guys watching are probably so young and we are so young like me included we are young and so we have all this opportunity to continue to grow in our whole life and just take all these different turns and directions and be so thankful for them so if i can be here to encourage any of you make sure that you check out my email list below i have some really great topics coming soon just about how to reverse diet how to count macros tracking out ending up this summer how to get into this like winter bod but also maintain for a next year look all of the great things and then also obviously my full nutritional guide launched last week so much work went into that guide so if you're someone questioning nutrition, how to incorporate nutrition around your goals, when to eat, how to eat, literally everything possible. Make sure you check out that in the description box below. If you haven't already, like I said earlier, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications if you want to know when my videos go live because I am quite sporadic. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you in the next video where we will be discussing on the final episode of this series, how to reverse diet and how to gain lean mass without gaining added fat mass. So I'll see you guys in the next video.